In today's video, I wanted to show you how I got rid of all of the white space, the negative space behind these circles so that I could change the background of the image to whatever color I choose. So what that means is that the background is transparent. So any layer, any color I put below it is going to show, but the circles are opaque. So the color is not going to show through the circles. Before making this video, I tried removing the white space many, many times in many ways. And this is the way that I found to be most efficient for this case. It's possible that for other cases, there will be other ways that will be more efficient. One thing to notice is that the background has a little bit of noise in it, and that's because this is a scanned image of cold press watercolor paper, which has some texture. So the white has some of that noise. And another thing to notice here is that some of the circles here are very, very light. So if I were to use the magic wand tool to select the negative space, it's also going to grab some of the circles. I could work with that by subtracting the selection of the circles, but that's not my preferred way. I did try that and it's not the way I thought was the quickest or the most, the easiest to apply. So I'll show you the way that I think works better. I used the magic wand tool and just clicked here, right? And it's also selecting the white in all kinds of islands on this image. And that's because contiguous is unchecked. But if I check contiguous and select, it's only going to choose one island. It's not going to jump across the borders of the selection to other areas like over here and here and here and here. So by doing that, I'm, I'm giving myself more work because I'm going to have to select each island, but at least I'm not going to select the insides of the circles. And so I'm going to work in contiguous. Now, let's say I want to delete this area and I hit delete, then it's it's actually deleting those pixels from the image. So rather than doing that, I prefer to add a layer mask and use a layer mask to hide parts of the image rather than actually deleting those pixels from the image. So let me explain. So let's say I have this image and I add a layer mask. What that does is it adds this square next to the image. So I can either be working on the image or working on the layer mask. If I'm working on the image and I use a brush and my foreground color is black, I scribble and it scribbles black on the image. And if I change to white, it's going to scribble white on the image, obviously. But if I select the layer mask, if I scribble in black, it's going to hide that part of the image. And if I scribble in white, it's going to reveal part of the image. That's how a layer mask works. Black conceals and white reveals. And you can actually see that when I'm scribbling in black, if you look over here, you can see that when I scribble in black, it's actually scribbling on this little square. And if you're curious, you want to see what the layer mask looks like, press down alt and click. And you're going to see the scribbles in black and white. And you can even actually scribble directly on here if you want to, if you want to do that. So that's what layer masks are in a nutshell. And you can disable them or delete them or apply them in order to actually erase the pixels from the image. So I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to start with a new one. And then when I use the magic wand to select this area and I'm selecting the layer mask, not the image, and I hit delete, it's going to paint that area in black on the layer mask in order to hide or conceal these pixels from the image. Now, why does delete do that? Because when you click delete, you're actually filling with the background color. If your background color is white and you click delete, it's going to fill it in white and it's going to reveal that area. So make sure your background color is black when you hit delete in order for that to work. Basically what you do now is to select each island and delete it. But you can see that some of these islands have noise in them and the magic wand tool doesn't want to select that noise. So you can tell the magic wand tool, listen, you're being too intolerant to differences. I want you to be more tolerant and accept some of this noise as the same color. So I try and raise the tolerance to 50 and I deselect and select again, and now it's going to work. 
So these numbers are just the way that you can tweak the tolerance. There's nothing magical about them. It has to do with the differences in colors that appear in your image. And one number that'll work for one image might not work for another. Or even one number that works in one area of the image might not work for another. So as I'm selecting, I'm making sure that my selection doesn't cross over into any circle. And I'm making sure that I don't have these specks of unselected stuff. So in this case, if I want to get rid of these little specks, I'll tell the magic wand to be a little bit more tolerant and hopefully it won't cross over into a circle while still selecting those specks for me. So 65 is not good because it crossed over into the circle and 60 isn't good because it didn't grab the speck. So what I'm going to do is stay with 60 because I don't want to cross over into any circle and then have to fix it. But in order to grab that speck, what I'm going to use is, well, one of many options. If it's just one speck, I can just add that to the selection using the lasso tool. But let's say I had a lot of specks, then I would go to select, modify, smooth, and use as small radius that I can to cause the selection to grab that as well. So let's try again, smooth with five. Oops. And the reason I don't want to use a high number for smoothing is smoothing also smooths the selection in these corners here. And that will leave some white in these corners. When you're seeing the checkerboard that indicates transparency, you can't really tell if the selection is good or not. So I like to have a background color, preferably a background color that makes it super easy for me to tell where the circles end and where the background begins. So I chose red because it's a color that doesn't appear in these circles. And you can see that the circles don't have any white halo and also these points look pretty well selected. So that works for me and I'm going to continue with the magic wand, making sure I'm selecting the layer mask, not the image, the layer mask of the image. And as I'm selecting, I'm looking out for any areas that are blinking inside the selection, which would tell me that I'm not selecting some of the noise. So 60 tolerance works fine for selecting this area because the surrounding circles are dark, but 60 tolerance doesn't work fine here because this circle is very light and the magic wand is too tolerant and it crosses over the border and selects the circle. So I want it to be less tolerant. Let's try 50 and that worked and that's good for me. Now here also it was too tolerant and it crossed over, but look at this. If I press here, it crosses over. If I press here, it doesn't. So you can try that. Maybe here there is a bit of a darker color. So it's making this also part of the selection. So I want the magic wand to do the work for me. I don't want to define the borders by hand. That will take me hours to do. I know it might sound tedious to play around with the tolerance, but believe me, I tried many other ways to do this and it's worth it. This was definitely a lesson I'm happy I learned. It and it's something I plan to apply in the future. You can see that again, if I select in this spot, in some spots, it only selects the area I want to delete, but in other spots, it's going to, it's they're kind of darker. I can hardly tell, but there was a spot here that when I selected it, it decided that this is part of the area as well. So instead of tweaking the tolerance, you can try and select a different area. So now you have an image with a transparent background where the circles are completely opaque and aren't affected by the color of the background. And you can change the background color to be whatever you like. By the way, this layer, this background layer is a fill layer, which means that 
it represents a layer that's filled in with one color. So I prefer doing that for the background rather than creating a layer and filling it with the bucket tool because it's a lot faster to change the color when it's a fill layer. With some colors of background, I can see that I missed some of the specs. So I can just go back to selecting the layer mask and the magic wand and select that whole area and press delete. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, leave me a comment and a like for this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next one.